What's up, Comp 1 students? Hope you've been doing well. Uh, we are here at the very end of the semester now. We have written the narrative paper. We've explored, you know, what makes a narrative paper work, what type of writing really pulls people in, how to write well, how to write effectively in such a way that draws people in in a world where attention spans are very small. Uh, from there, we analyzed rhetoric, which really we're just analyzing effective writing. And we talked about how effective writing can be persuasive, you know, kind of like when you hear a good story, it persuades you to think a certain way or feel a certain way, even if that's a subconscious, you know, sensation. Good writing, good communication, you know, persuades people based on credibility, emotion, logic, and, you know, narrative. Uh, we've just recently got done with the argumentative paper where we kind of brought it all together, where you had to make a claim and you had to support that claim with persuasive evidence. And you had to even consider counterclaims and consider what the opposition was saying and really figure out a way to navigate not only how to develop your own ideas, uh, but how to develop responses to other people's ideas in a way that was effective, empathetic, and um, that included people, made people felt like their ideas were heard. And so where does that leave us? Well, in composition one, everything kind of leads up to the research paper. Now, I know what you're probably thinking, what is a research paper? Haven't we been doing some research? Well, you have. You have absolutely been doing some research. And so with the research paper where we're going to bring everything we've learned together, including developing our own ideas. So the difference between the research paper and the argumentative paper is the argumentative paper, we are looking at something that is very argumentative and we are trying to argue a position on it. With this research paper, it's more about asking a question, exploring a research question. And that question is something that you have to develop. So you have to come up with your own question, develop your own question to something that isn't clearly answered, okay? I need you all to kind of sit with that for a second. There's no sense in researching something that already has a clear, definable answer. So we're only researching things. We're only asking questions and researching the answer to those questions that don't have clear, definable answers. This is how anything that we see, any world that we exist in, this is how it was discovered by people asking questions and exploring the answer to those questions, even outside the realm of, you know, composition, but science, <clears throat> um, any other communication in any other field of study, <clears throat> questions are asked, research questions are asked, and the research question is what drives the exploration of that specific topic, okay? And so it's a little bit different where the argumentative paper, you're choosing a topic and choosing a, a side on the topic. For this, you are essentially, you are developing the own question and you have to go piece together the answer to this specific question. So that's what makes it a research paper. Would it be a research paper if you could just Google, you know, Google the question and the answer come up? No. So that's what makes the research paper on one hand, Kind of exciting is that you get to develop your own question and then you have to piece together through research looking at primary and secondary sources and using your own perspective and your own lens you have to create the answer you know a credible strong logical persuasive answer to the question you're asking the, the answer doesn't exist and you are piecing together the answer to the question you're asking. And so we see pieces of that in the argumentative paper, right? But in the argumentative paper, we're taking a specific position on a very debatable topic. 
you know, and then on the research paper, we are essentially creating a question that maybe has been asked before, that maybe some people are wondering about, you know, and we are, through our own research of primary and secondary sources, we are piecing together the answer to that specific research question. In the argumentative paper, I think I gave all of you an example of some papers that I've written. Um, and so one of the papers I wrote in the past was about people experiencing homelessness. This was something that I was very passionate about. Um, and so for several years, I was traveling and I was doing some research. Now, the research came from my personal experiences. And a question kind of came to my mind as I was out on the street spending time with people. I had been volunteering at several organizations and all the org organizations I was working with were trying to provide specific type of services to people on the street, right? And most of those services were housing services, which is fantastic, right? You want to get people off the street into homes. But as I was traveling and as I was spending time with people on the street, one of the things I began to notice is that people on the street were incredibly lonely uh, and they felt very misunderstood. And so I kind of developed this idea and I, I didn't know if it was true or not, like how, you know, how important are is community and healthy relationships to people on the street compared to just getting them in homes. So the question I had was, do people in this experiencing homelessness, do they need relationships first and then housing? And do they need healthy friendships first and then housing? So I began to explore that. And I, you know, that was the question that was kind of driving my research. And I couldn't just go ask somebody because Nobody had that answer. This was a specific answer question that I was asking. So I had to go find the answer based on analyzing and finding different pieces of research and putting it all together, bringing it all together, synthesizing, which is a word I'm going to use again in a moment, but I had to synthesize. So the answer didn't exist, but I had to create, you know, three or four reasons why I believed I was able to answer that question. And so as I was exploring, I would talk to people in the street a lot about loneliness and I would ask them questions about relationships and loneliness. And then I would ask them about their past experiences with family and friends. And as I began to travel, I began to piece together some reasons I believed I could answer this specific question. So this is what makes a research paper difficult, especially for new writers or new thinkers, is the ball is all in your court. I think in high school and early on in our education, we're so used to being presented with a question. Research this. This is what I want you to research, and this is what you need to be looking for. But in real research, it's about asking a question. It's about a research question driving all of the research. And then your thesis, your thesis essentially is the answer to that question, right? So you have a question, here's your question. It drives your research, right? It, and your attempt to answer the question drives everything you're looking for. So once you gather all this information and you piece together three or four reasons why you think you can answer that question, then your thesis becomes the answer to that question for this reason, this reason, this reason, and this reason, right? And then the body of your paper is an, is an analyzation, an exploration of each one of those reasons supported by persuasive evidence, credible evidence. Remember when we were looking at rhetoric, what made rhetoric really, really strong? And so much of that is you establishing credibility. So none of you are you know researchers in the sense that you created the research yet you are piecing together information from other professors researchers scientists for the sake of developing an, an really an analyzation of this question that you've you've attempted to answer all right so 
You know, one of the things that can be confusing as well is we, we hear this word research often and people use that word really loosely, you know? And so when we think of research papers, we think of stacks of books and, and, and papers being scattered everywhere and lines of articles being highlighted and, you know, things of that nature. Um, and, and a lot of people use the term research paper when really what they mean is they're just gathering information about a, about a topic, you know, and that, that is a form of research. So, you know, if you were to Google, what is a research paper? There's no one, you know, there's no one explanation. Nobody has a clear consensus about how you would describe a research paper, you know, what a research paper is. But for the sake of this class, we're going to use this definition. And it's kind of one that I've pieced together from several different sources, you know, so this isn't necessarily my original, uh, uh, you know, uh, definition of a research paper, but it's from several different places. So for the sake of what we're going to be doing, a research paper is a synthesis of research, critical thinking, source evaluation, organization, and writing. Okay. I know that is long winded. I'll say it again. A research paper is a synthesis. So to synthesize things is almost the opposite of analyzing. Uh, of course, those things kind of go hand in hand. When we analyze things, we break them apart, right? To, to look at them closely, to get a better understanding of how they work. And then we put them back together with an understanding of how it works as part of the whole. To synthesize means to bring lots of things together. You know, we're bringing lots of different things together into one coherent whole. So that word synthesize is really important because like we said a minute ago, your research question is a question you're asking and there's no definable answer to that research question. So you're going to have to go and find sources that support your reasoning for answering the question the way you believe it is. You're going to have to try to answer that question, you know, by synthesizing information. You're going to have to go find information here and here and here. So, for example, when I did the paper on people experiencing homelessness, there was nowhere that said that loneliness played a significant role in a person who experiencing homelessness, their inability to get off the street. But that's kind of what I was saying. I was saying, hey, I think you know, how large of a role does loneliness play in a person experiencing homelessness in their ability to create a pathway out of homelessness? Well, the answer to that question didn't exist. So I had to go look at different things. I went and looked at, you know, the human need for relationships, you know, just humans in general, you know, people who are not experiencing homelessness. I had to go look at the effects of loneliness, you know, not in people on the street, but just the effects of loneliness on anybody, you know. And then I had to go look at statistics, you know, that talked about, you know, how successful were people who were experiencing homelessness, you know, who were just put into housing. Like, is that really what they needed? What were those success rates? How, how many of them ended up back on the street after six months or 12 months? So you see what I'm saying here? I had to explore the answer to this question without really knowing which direction, which is why I had to go do research. So, and then I took all of those things and I synthesized them together and created a whole answer to the question. So you're gonna bring everything into this coherent whole of oneness that essentially is your thesis. It is the answer to your research question and it provides really clear definable reasons why you're answering the research question the way you've answered it with evidence, right? So why, why did you come to the conclusion you came about the research question? And what is some evidence to support the conclusions that you came to re regarding your research question? All right. 
There's a lot of information here. I'm going to also put this in the Blackboard so you'll be able to look at something. But one of the things I want you to really understand, and if you can get this, I feel like you'll be just fine, is that this research paper is driven by a question that you're asking and your thesis is the answer to that question, all right? And the body of your paper is the reason you answered the question the way you did, all right? So there's several parts to a research paper for the sake of this class, and you're gonna, these parts are gonna look really familiar. They're gonna sound familiar because, you know, we did them last week, in the last couple of weeks. So obviously we have our introduction and we're going to hook the audience here. We're going to we're going to give basic thoughts about the research question. We're going to provide the thesis, which, like I said, should be an answer to your research question. Um, and think of this at your thesis as a roadmap you're giving to your audience, basically letting them know uh, this is where you're going to go. This is what you're about to read. Your first body paragraph is going to sound familiar. It's going to be summary on the background of your topic. Think of this as providing your audience with background information they need to know in order to fully understand your research topic, all right? So you're gonna need to research this and gather information and summarize the information so your audience will know what you're gonna talk about. So remember, when we're writing, we're communicating and we have to assume that the audience doesn't know much, right? We have to give the audience everything they need to know so that as we are providing our reasoning in the body of our paper, they have some framework to understand that reasoning. We have established some ground some groundwork for them to stand on so they can understand what it is you're attempting to say. To go back to the example of the paper that I wrote, I my summary was about, you know, how um, you know the state of homelessness in America you know, and how many of these people who are experiencing this pandemic, how many of them had suffered broken relationships and broken friendships, right? So I had to present this idea that where my research came from, why I'm doing the research, and here's what you need to know so far. Here's, here's where we are so far in regards to the topic I'm about to give you, all right? And so your summary might be a couple of paragraphs, right? And your other body paragraphs, your, your third body paragraph, all right? You're going to introduce your specific research question, all right? This is where we're introducing the research question. We're introducing some of the main ideas that, you know, of our exploration. We're introducing here, you know, our findings. It's almost like an extension of the thesis, right? But we're just introducing that question again and we are you know we're going to introduce the idea of the problem right because there's got to be a problem for us to ask a specific question and then we're going to explore the problem in that question attempt to answer it and then slowly come to a conclusion all right so this third body paragraph really is almost an extension of the introduction all right where we have the introduction we give the thesis, right? And then we summarize the topic. And then that third body paragraph, we're going to kind of revisit the introduction just kind of as a refresher, right? Because we've given them the thesis and then we've given them the background. But now that they have the background, right, we kind of want to reintroduce, you know, the issue driving this research. What is the question? Why we, Why the, the answering of this question important? You know, and what are some things that we found to help us answer this specific question? All right. And then in the next body paragraphs, body paragraphs four, five, six, seven, or however many you need, this is you exploring your research question. You're answering it. You're, an you're giving the reasons of why and how and evidence to support the why and how that you're, that you're answering the question the way you are. All right. So you got to unpack it. You have to analyze it, right? You have to talk about how you think this reason really supports your answer to the research question. Because remember, there is nobody is out there answering our research question for us. It It's not a research question if it's easily answerable, right? 
that isn't a research question. We're trying to, we're attempting to answer something that nobody has answered before. So think about it like this. Research is this, is this collective. Everybody in the world, like take all of the people in the world in this big circle. And in the beginning of time, very little was known, right? So, you know, we didn't know much about anything, right? We didn't know what the sky was, what air was, what water was made of, or, you know, we, we didn't know anything. But as people started answering, asking questions, those questions and, and researching, you know, at first in some really rudimentary, basic ways, and then as time has progressed and technology has progressed, we've been able to, you know, do it in more sophisticated ways. But with every question somebody asks, right, that, 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 that prompts this exploration to answer that question. And when that question's answered, our knowledge grows a little. Our collective knowledge grows a little, right? And then more questions are asked which prompts all of us to go research, which we come to more answers, which means our knowledge grows more and more and more. So you are a part of the collective here. You're attempting to add to the collective knowledge of the universe, of people, of humanity. That's the main idea. And I know that feels really large in composition one. We have very limited time. You've got three weeks to write this research paper, you know, and, you know, we're only looking at four to five pages. As you progress in college, you know, if you keep going to, uh, you know, graduate school and post-grad and you work on a doctorate, like these research papers can become massive. And so, but, so we don't have a lot of time now. So I understand that your ability to fully, really explore a research question is stunted by time and by, you know, length requirements. But I want to give you that idea. So just remember that the more questions, think about it on a personal level. The more questions you ask, the more answers you arrive to. And the more answers you have about things, your knowledge expands. This is how we learn. This is how we grow. This is somebody who asks a lot of questions. This is why kids are so inquisitive, right? What is this? What is this? What is this? Because every answer they get, their understanding and knowledge of what it means to be human, what it means to exist in the world, it grows. At some point, sometimes humans stop asking questions, but I promise you keep asking questions, keep exploring the answer to those questions. That is how you grow. Same as like, you know, uh, I wonder you know, if you want to learn how to play the piano, right? You, you explore that and then you know how to play the piano. You want to know how, you know, um, dieting works. You know, how does dieting work? You get online and you look at that, then you know. So your knowledge is a little bit more. Maybe you want to work out a specific body, a specific muscle group. So you're, you know, how do, I, how do I work out my biceps? Well, you get online and you do research and you find ways to work out your biceps. Now you know, right? So research, this idea here of this research paper, this is the essence of how we learn as humans anyways. So if you feel like you're getting a little bit shaky, if you feel like it feels too big, just remember that this process of research really is in our DNA as humans, right? This is what we do. Even if you weren't in uh, the classroom setting, even outside, you know, um, you probably ask questions every day and then you go look for those answers um, you know uh, and your knowledge is grown right the only difference here is that you are asking trying to ask a question that has never been asked before and you have to develop the answer that's the only difference but the essence of it is the same. This is how we learn. This is how we grow our understanding of anything. So you're going to have your introduction. You have your summary, right? That's going to, you know, require a paragraph or two. And then we're kind of reintroducing the thesis, right? And we're, you know, making people aware of what the problem is and how we arrived at the answer that we did, you know? Um, and it's really important not to be one way or the other. Like the, the research question is what drives your research, not the answer. You don't start research with an answer. That doesn't make any sense, right? 
So you have to be unbiased. You have to be willing to step into this whole space and be okay with the answer being whatever it is, all right? Now you may have an idea, like when I was doing my paper on people experiencing homelessness, I did have this idea that I thought, man, I really think loneliness plays a big part in making life difficult for people on the street to get off the street. Like I was working with that assumption, but I allowed the research and I was trying to answer the question in that way, but I had to go find evidence and research to support that answer. I couldn't just make it up, right? So sometimes we might have a research question and think it's gonna be answered a certain way, you know, kind of like a hypothesis, but sometimes the more research we do, that will, you know, be blown up and we might have to end up moving a different way and say, hey, you know what, after all this exploration and research and the secondary, primary and secondary sources really seems like my initial hypothesis was wrong. So this is really the answer to that research question. So, you know, research is really, really important, not just in education, but in anything. I think you go look at Facebook, social media, talking heads on the internet, on television. So few people understand how to do proper research. Some pe so many people are really bad at articulating and communicating their findings in research. Research is not going to a website that you know is going to give you the answer you hope to have and regurgitating that. True research is developing your own research questions exploring answers, you know, develop, and then developing an answer to that research question, essentially, based on your own findings, you know, that are supported by primary and secondary evidence. So I really want you to focus on bringing everything together here. I want you to think about this as an opportunity to introduce an audience to a new idea and walk them through the exploration of this. All of this, it's all a narrative, right? And I keep going back to that with all of these papers because I believe in the power of narrative. So tell a story with this research paper, you know? Now, um, I know that feels difficult because academic papers, we don't write first person. You'll be writing, you know, in third person here. So how do you tell a story about a specific research question. Well, remember that every research question affects humanity. These are all deeply human questions, even questions that don't have to do specifically with, you know, our humanity, like, you know, what, how big is space? Well, you know, you could look, you could look at that question, how big is the universe and go, well, that, that's not a human based question. But that question only exists because of the human's desire to know the answer to the question. You know, it's our it's our fascination with how small we are and how big the place we exist in is. So every question that you're going to ask is deeply human and it's born out of human curiosity. All right. So tell the story of, you know, even from the beginning of the introduction, even through the summary and as you're unpacking your reasons for arriving at the answer you did, it is a narrative. Build it up, you know, build it up, almost like a, a story where you have this, you know, slow ride, you know, rising action, and then you're, you're kind of crescendoing to the climax, and then, you know, you're slowly falling down. Think about the slow rise is like you're supporting, you know, the, 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 the first incident is you, the research question, right? The slow rise is the attempt to answer the question. The end is like the definitive, yes, this is how, this is what I've arrived to. This is the conclusions I've made based on the evidence I have found and my ideas and my own reasoning. Boom. And then, you know, shut down the paper. But we want to make sure that we're writing in such a way that we're thinking about the audience, that we are trying to keep them engaged you know, I think so often people write research papers, but who's reading them? They're written in such a dry, drab manner. We want to be engaging. 
we want all of our communication, all of our writing to be engaging so people listen, so we can express our ideas, so that we can express our findings. But nobody, we got to make sure that we're, we're, we're communicating our, our ideas and we're expressing our ideas in a way that is engaging, that is, you know, logical, incredible, and that it's in, full of emotion and that it says something about the human experience. So we're going to continue talking about the research paper over the next week. Um, it's where I'm going to have another video for you next week. But I want you to be thinking about several things this week. What is a question you've had about something that you would want to explore? Think about a topic. Think about a question, a research question that you would want to explore. All right. Think about that first. All right. And maybe you have some general ideas about how you might answer that question. And that would be a really, really good start. But I want you to remember the research question is what drives the entire research paper. So you need to be really specific with a research question. Okay. It can't be, you know, what is diabetes? And remember the research question has to be something you can't just Google the answer to. The answer isn't, you know, universally known or it's not, you know, it's got to be something that you're attempting to answer yourself based on what you find. So this is going to be the thing that really pushes you um, as you're researching. It's going to be the thing that's pulling you through the story, so to speak. So I want you to develop a research question. It can be about whatever you want, but make sure it's a very, very specific question because if it's too broad, it's going to be too difficult. There's going to be too much information. Every research question is attempting to answer a very small piece of the larger whole. When I was doing my paper on homelessness, I was specifically talking about the effects of loneliness on people who were experiencing chronic homelessness, right? That's a very specific question, right? So get as specific as you can uh, with your research question, because this is the thing that is going to be driving the rest of your research. Appreciate you all hanging out with me for the last 30 minutes. Y'all have a good day.